Hey guys, how's it going? The last few days it's been raining, and um, now that the sun is out, the air is somewhat warm, I figured this would be a perfect time to review some Renaissance pictures. Like, um, this one. Also, I should probably warn you guys, there's going to be some religious opinions about this. So, if you have a problem with religion or God in general, anything on those lines, then um, I advise you to leave because I'm going to be talking about that. And you should really give me some credit because I warned you. So, for the first picture, um, it looks like, uh, the very first furry party. It looks like there's a deer man, a bunny man, and a pig man. This is, uh, just my personal theory, but you know those masquerade balls where people dress up as clowns, as those goblin demon creatures, and, um, they wear some really nice suits, like in the uh, Phantom of the Opera. Um, uh, there's another one. There's like three of them that I can think of. Um, there was Edgar Allan Poe's Mask of the Death. Uh, what is up with my stupid phone? <clears throat> I swear, I, I thought that the... I turned the auto turn off for like 30 minutes, but I guess not. Anyway, masquerade balls. I think this is kind of like the very first masquerade ball, and uh, maybe everyone's holding hands and it looks like there's dancing involved with the deer man and the lady on the very far right, and then this guy holding what looks like a musical instrument. It is a musical instrument. Anyway, next picture. Silence thy babbling tongue and accept mine tributes. Oh, thine. Killer rabbits. This is going to be Kind, it's kind of common, like, there's dozens of pictures of these killer rabbits. And, um, I have, like, two theories on this one. They might be the same kind of theory. It'd be awesome if they were the same one. But my first theory is that maybe this is, like, a forgotten fairy tale. Like, it wasn't popular enough and then left out in public domain and no one knows what it is because of the like the ancient latin language that no one deciphers but um that's one and um maybe it's m medieval looney tunes like there's pictures of animals doing weird stuff to humans that humans do to animals all the time like this next picture. A cow <laughs> milking a woman. <laughs> oh my god. But, um, I think the... I don't really know. I don't know any of the books or the kind... What's going on here. But, um, I think the rabbits... And this cow milking a woman are in the same story. If they're not, that's okay. But at the same time, it's just animals doing weird stuff to humans. And I think it's just like the ancestors of Bugs Bunny or... Uh, what's the name of the one cow from those Disney one, Disney's uh, Clarabelle? I think that's her name. Like, I don't know. 
medieval Looney Tunes. That's all I got. Medieval Looney Tunes who kill people. Because that's the age they came from. Uh, this one. I really don't know. Like, why would you use a sword like a hammer by grabbing it by the blade? I've heard of some really interesting sword techniques. I love swords and stuff. I watched for I watch Forged in Fire. I watch Deadliest Warrior. Even to this day, I'm watching like re reruns of Deadliest Warrior and Forged in Fire. But I never heard or seen like this kind of sword technique before. It might be common outside of Forged in Fire and Deadliest Warrior. That's for sure. There's like hundreds of shows about swords and knights and stuff. Sword and knight documentaries and stuff. But I never saw this before. I don't know. Ancient sword techniques that are helpful. I guess. Here's a, another common one. Uh, snails attacking knights, or knights attacking snails. This is just one of them. I have, I've heard and read some really interesting theories on this one, and I actually agree with them because they make sense. <clears throat> it's, um, the snail represents, like, um, infidelity, I think. Maybe not so much as infidelity, more like, um, when, uh, invaders, pretty much. Like, back then, it was common to go out into war, invade someone else's country, and then pillage and plunder and rid them of their stuff. And, um, the knights are fighting against these invaders. Like, the... Hannibal, for example, where he rode an el- he took like an army of elephants and his soldiers and then traveled from Africa to Rome and uh, that's one example for an invader. There were- there was like other invaders that were theorized to represent the snails like uh Alexander the Great, I think. King Alexander, one of them. But, uh... I, other than that, I don't really know. There's a squirrel in my tree. <laughs> anyway. <sighs> Stupid phone. Hello. Just chilling in a tree. <laughs> uh, this one. I really love this one. Because it's just the knight wearing spiky armor, walking up to a dragon and just going, Neh. <laughs> uh, that's the sound he makes when he's kicking a dragon, just, Neh. But where this picture come from? Uh, personally, just like I said about the ancient Looney Tunes stuff, the medieval Looney Tunes, I think this one came from a story no different than um, St. George and the Dragon, uh, King Arthur, or Beowulf, where they're fighting dragons. Okay, King Arthur did not fight dragons, it according to the version of King Arthur that I have. <clears throat> but, um, n on the lines of, say, St. George and the Dragons, the Reluctant Dragon, um, Beowulf, the Lord of the Rings, this. Just like on those kinds of terms, like, maybe this is from a book no one's heard of, again. Like, 
maybe there are books that people never seen before and um, never read before because they're not popular enough so maybe this night oh, shit this night fighting a dragon in spiky armor yeah <laughs> came from a story no one's really heard of maybe it did come from something I never heard of a knight wearing spiky armor kicking dragons casually but uh ain't fairy tales that no one's heard of that's all I got for this one and then more snails fighting knights this is another one that actually shows how common these pictures really are. So maybe, maybe the, th the theory of the knights going into battle against invaders is still plausible. We'll just have to, I, stuff. <clears throat> we'll just have to see until this theory is confirmed. Okay, this is where I got stumped. It's what looks like testicles playing a pipe or a pipe made of testicles. Um, I guess this is just a way of saying there are perverted men out there who think with their balls and then so they talk with their balls if that makes any sense like maybe this is just a symbol for raunchy humor just a idea in general shit <laughs> uh, the squirrel jumped on top of my shed and then ran back up the tree oh god <clears throat> anyway this picture a man laying eggs. I think this picture is like a symbol for, um, like a, let's say this man is like a brilliant goose and chicken farmer, and then this, like, someone drew a picture of him, and, uh, this picture is supposed to be like, this man is so good at his job he is so good at chicken farming and he's so he's rich because of all the chickens and eggs that he sold from those chickens that he must have laid eggs himself it's a really interesting metaphor and I'm actually behind this theory all the way like maybe that's what it is Okay, this is, uh, <laughs> um, medieval proctology, gynecology, and suppositories. That's all I have to say about this one. What looks like a blue horse with a long pretzel neck and the head of a monkey. I believe that there are animals that have gone extinct maybe a thousand years before, maybe thousands of years ago, there were some animals that have gone extinct, and maybe this animal is one of them, only I don't know about the pretzel neck, the twisted pretzel neck, but, um... I don't know. Maybe it's an animal that represents another animal who's gone extinct. Maybe. I don't know. Medieval porn. Nuff said. You know what I said about Hannibal and the invaders going from Africa to through Europe all the way to Rome? I think this is what it's supposed to be. Because, have you seen those, like, fortresses 
they used on top of the backs of elephants. They are act like this one isn't really as close as to what it is, but it's close enough. Like they actually use e elephants as like battle tanks from back then. More ancient fairy tales. Only this one is on the line of who killed Cock Robin. For those of you who don't know who killed Cock Rob, what who killed Cock Robin is, it's um pretty much a fairy tale story about a bird who's been murdered, and then it's a murder story, like a cold case, forensic files on who killed Cock Robin pretty much and there's birds there's bulls and uh it's kind of depressing really okay <clears throat> i've been looking at this one for a while now and uh i think it's the symbol of marriage and unity like two mermaid one is a merman one is a mermaid they're uh connected to the same plant inside of the bottle i could see this being like a really interesting symbol for like um what's the word like not marriage but kind of like marriage um Shit, I can't think of a word, but I think this, like, before the two golden rings or the two rings that symbolize, like, love is infinite, which means there's no edge, there's no edge to how it works. Holding up my phone so I'm doing everything one-handed, like, how the ring is supposed to symbolize, like, infinite infinity because there's no edge so it's a constant circle that represents like eternal life eternal love infinite love and um you see how the two tails kind of twist so if they didn't twist the mermaid would be on the right and the merman would be on the left or other way around <sighs> but um like you you see that right so i think that little notch is supposed like this little twist whatever is supposed to represent what this ring stands for as for this plant and the other plants, I really don't know what the plant really symbolizes. Maybe it symbolizes purity, which does explain why they're inside of a bottle. And then there's probably water inside the bottle because the water representing purity. And then the blooming flower could represent like purity too, like two virgins getting married is pretty much like you don't have sex before marriage kind of thing. Thou shalt not commit adultery. This is where the religious talk is coming in at last. <clears throat> I don't really know what this is. Um... I can probably see how some religious symbolism is in this one because of the sun and moon and the lady and the sacrificing children inside of a well, but to be kind of honest with you, I don't really know what's going on here. Maybe they're sacrificing and uh, or doing some ancient medicine that we never heard of. I don't really know. Okay, this is where the re 
where I can see how this is probably the most religious symbol, the most religious symbol, symbolic nature of religion comes into play. Like, maybe the king with the sun over his head represents God. This mermaid with that one symbol over her head, I, I think, I don't know where I saw that symbol before. But the one on the moon represents like Jesus or the middle class angels and then the star represents Satan and he's pouring his substance into the river. Like Satan isn't joining this river bath, isn't in this taking a bath with the representation of with the sun. The representation of the moon with the mermaid. Um, so I don't really know. Maybe it's a symbol that the devil has tainted our purity. Like we're taking a bath with God and Jesus in a way. And then Satan is just pouring his impurity onto the earth. Maybe... Only the earth, the river itself represents the earth. But, uh, I really don't know. That That's all I got for this one. If uh, you have any theories on what this could mean, I'll probably mention it in another video. This one, I'm stumped as well. This one, I am stumped as well. Because, uh, a uh, dragon centaur with a sun head. I can probably see some heavy symbolism and religious symbolism to it. Maybe there's not so much as religious symbolism. <clears throat> but maybe something symbolistic. Like, there's some heavy symbolism here. I don't really know, to be honest with you. I'm stumped as well on this one. Okay, this one, I could probably see, see what this one is. Like, uh, you've seen Evil Dead. For those of you, <laughs> I'm, uh... This is just my personal kind of theory uh you've seen evil dead right there's a scene where a woman runs off into the forest and then the for the trees and the shrubs come to life they attack her they tie her up and then all of a sudden she gets raped by a tree when a branch just shoots into her vagina if you don't call that rape then i don't know what you call it whatever you want. I call it rape by tree because that's what it's pretty much narrowed up to. But, um, dragons. I think this is kind of like on the same lines. Like, maybe it's a story about a woman who goes running off into the forest. She gets attacked by dragons. She gets bitten by dragons. Probably molested by dragons, too. But the moral of the story is don't go into the woods when there's creepy shit going. Here's a really more detailed version of the dragon centaur with the sun for a head. Um, Bas Kilfe Bitch. Yeah, I don't know what that's what that really says or what it really means, but from the other picture, I kind of noticed the same kind of phrase. So, I don't know. I don't speak Latin. I don't speak speak ancient Latin or the only Latin I speak is pig Latin. <laughs> But other than, other than that, I don't know, really. <clears throat> uh, this one. 
to me, I think this is like a symbol for like, God bless you, like when you sneeze, someone says God bless you because of the ancient plagues. They think that you're dying because of a sneeze, so they say God bless you, and I don't know. I think it's kind of odd to bless someone after farting, like... God bless you, my son. But yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's kind of weird to bless someone after farting, but maybe it was common. Maybe. I never been blessed for farting, but I don't know. That does explain why we have to say excuse me after burping, farting, and sneezing, I guess. Like, bless me. No, how to excuse me, I guess. I don't know. You have to beg for forgiveness for farting. I never really understood that, to be honest with you. Burping, sneezing, and farting. I never understood why we have to excuse ourselves for doing it. I have no control over farts, sneezes, and burps. So why should I apologize for that? I have no full control of what my body wants to do. But yeah, I don't know. Blessing someone for farting. I... I don't know. Maybe it was common. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe I'm just reading the picture wrong. I don't know. I'll make a part two. Uh, if you have any comments on what this picture is, I'll probably mention it in the next video. Okay, here is some really interesting symbolism comes in. This um, kind of reminds me of the original Hans Christian Andersen story of Chicken Little. For those of you who don't know, the story ends with Foxy Loxy leading to a bunch of the like scared geese and chickens and all those other birds to a sanctuary because the sky is falling. Chicken Little gets hit on the head with an acorn and then all everyone's running around in a panic. The sky is falling, the sky is falling. And then all of a sudden Foxy Loxy is like, come into my cave, it's safe. And then everyone goes into the cave because it's safe only to find out that they all get eaten because of Foxy Loxy. He eats everyone. So, maybe this is kind of like a symbolistic, like, a sim, a symbol of like, um, or a representation of the corrupted church from back then. Like, maybe the dog or fox, wolf, whatever, represents the corrupted side of a Catholic and or Orthodox Catholic or Orthodox Christian church and all the geese and chickens are just the rep are representing the majority of people who are following the cor sorry who are following the corrupted church and just the sheep to slaughter, pretty much. Okay. I really don't know what this is. I think it's kind of like how we're all a part of God's body, in a way. Like, God is a part of us. Like, God... We are a part of God as much as God is a part of us. Which kind of explains look that and then the half black half gold i think it kind of symbolizes us because it's m the armor 
and then like the like how we're not everyone is born half e not everyone is born of pure evil as much as no one is born of pure good kind of what i think like there they people say there's no such thing as pure evil and in a way maybe there's no such thing as pure good evil like everyone starts off neutral and then everyone decides what they want to do then and then the platform made of demon faces and then the chicken legs i don't really know what the chicken legs stand for but the demon faces could represent us standing on top of demons and then the snake ladies curling up the legs of this person are just the demons coming up and then consuming us pretty much like uh demons who tell us to do bad demons who tell us to do bad things possess us and then stuff like i could see that yeah and then like they're in a constant battle with god and the holy spirit like i could actually see how this see that in this picture and then another one with these elephant fortresses attacking people this one has like a part of a british flag to it so maybe maybe elephant battle tanks were common like really common like they made deals with Africa, and they made deals with India, and now everyone fights in elephant battle fortresses. I don't know. <clears throat> it's, to me, it seems really extremely common, which is why no one really talks about it as much. But I, I don't. I don't really know. I guess that's it for this one. Thank you so much if you're still watching this video with me. Thank you so much for watching. And, um, I'll be making a part two. If you have any comments, please uh, share them and I'll probably mention them in the next video. I do plan on making a part two because there's so many other pictures. So, um, I'll be in touch. As always, leave a like, subscribe, and have a nice day or a nice night.